This video will review some of the fundamental basic wall creation concepts, including location line, wall function priority in compound walls, and how to attach the top constraint of a wall to a floor. To start, what we'll do is we'll activate the wall command. For this project, we're going to use the interior 4 and 7 eighths partition for all of our interior walls. And what I'll do is I'm going to use the wall center line location line because I want the walls to be centered on the grids and the reference planes that are already in place. I'll start by creating a wall that runs down grid line two. And then I'll draw it around grid line B and then down the reference plane. Adding walls to create rooms on the south side and the north side of the building. And then adding a couple walls in here to create a stairwell and a place for bathrooms that'll be drawn in the future. I'm gonna add a couple dimensions so that I could locate these walls precisely. And then using a combination of the split tool and trim extend a corner, I can create what's close to my final layout. The last couple walls I'll draw will be to divide this up into smaller offices. And then I can easily use the mirror pick axis tool. to create a series of offices on the south side. And then I can use it again to create my second stairwell on the east side of the building. The wall type that we used is a compound wall, interior four and seven eighths partition. If we were to look at the, the structure of this wall within the type properties, you can see that it's made up of three different layers, a finish on either side with a metal stud structural layer. The function that's given is an important item and should not be overlooked because if I were to change some of these layer priorities here, the way that it joins into other walls is gonna change and it could look different. For instance, if my exterior wall, which this is brick on metal stud here, if this had different priorities, say the metal stud was not the structural layer or one of these other ones was, then we would end up with some of our finished layers going through to join with the other side, leaving us with a graphic situation that we're not trying to achieve. Another item that's important to keep in mind is the location line we chose. So in this case, if I wanted to maintain a distance for my stairwell of nine feet, then what I'd wanna do is set that location line to be finish face exterior, since this is what is being defined as the exterior side, so that anytime I go in and change this wall type to something larger, you can see that this dimension is gonna stay the same no matter what always gonna be nine feet because I set the location line to finish face exterior. Now, if we go in and take a look at our level two floor plan, you can see that all the walls are ghosted in. And further, if I were to look at this in 3D, you can actually see all of these walls are actually protruding through the floor. So if I were to take a section and just quickly draw one through, you can see the walls are not terminating at the bottom of the floor, but instead are going all the way up to the top constraint, which is level two. What I could do is I could use the select all instances entire project, since those are the walls that we just drew. 
and I can use the attach top option and select my floor at level two and they'll all immediately be dropped down to the bottom of the floor at level two. The reason this one didn't go is because it was part of a different wall type. And when I use the select all instances, an entire project, this wall is not an instance of the interior foreign 7 8 inch partition type.